like that, you know? There's an awful lot of people in Please, here. Please, Dad, can I have one? I would really love to have one. Please, Dad, come on. Okay, let's go buy a movie. Great! Hey, champ! What's your name? Jason. Which balloon would you like, Jason? Uh, the red one. There you go. That'll be two dollars, sir. Jason, wait for me. Wait for your dad, son. It's really crowded in here. shoes with this crowd. Where's Jason? He was here a second ago. I bought him a balloon. I turned around and just disappeared. Disappeared? What do you mean disappeared? Stay here. I'll go get him. I'll be right back. Jason! 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 Jason, God, you really had me scared. Oh, <laughs> 
Hi, Sean. Hi, Dad. So, do you want to talk a little? Talk about what? I don't know, about you, your friends, how things are going. Nothing special. It's time for your snack. Are you hungry? I guess, uh, a little. Let's see what we can find in the kitchen. Here, Sean. Here's your snack. Thanks, Dad. Dad, I'm finished. Can I go watch TV? <laughs> Let me have a look. Pretty good. Looks like you're done. <laughs> Off you go. Come on, Sean. It's time for bed. I'm not tired yet. Can I stay up a little longer? Now, that's not very reasonable, is it? You have school tomorrow. You have to get some sleep. All right, I'm going. Are you coming with me? Go brush your teeth and put on your pajamas. I'll come up. <gasps> Thanks, Dad. Good night, Sean. Night. Dad? Yeah? Why do you look so sad? I think I just need some time. To get back to the way things were. You know, Dad, what happened to Jason wasn't your fault. Good night, Sean.
Lauren Winter. Ring any bells? Nope. Can't say it does. Oh, that Lauren Winter. Third floor, last door on the left at the end of the corridor. Sorry, I only see clients by appointment. Wait. It's 50 bucks. I don't kiss and I don't do any weird shit. Fine by me. Put your money on the table. You got exactly 10 minutes when the alarm rings, it's over, okay? You should take your clothes off. We ain't got all day. Actually, I'm not a customer. Oh, shit, a cop. I should have known. What do you want? A freebie? Is that it? My name is Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. The families of the victims of the origami killer asked me to investigate the murders. I came here just to ask you some questions about Johnny. I already told the police all I know and I have nothing to add. Leave me alone. I understand, Lauren. I know what you're going through. Oh yeah? You know what it feels like to find your own son's body on a wasteland? I'm sorry, I don't believe you have the slightest idea what I'm going through, Mr. Shelby. The killer is walking around free as we speak. He'll kill again if he's not arrested. My Johnny's dead, so what difference does it make? I bought 10 minutes of your time, didn't I? All I ask is that you use that time to answer some questions. You want to pay me to tell you about my son? Is that it? You can buy my body, Mr. Shelby, but my son is not for sale. Get out of here. Get the fuck out! Well, if you remember anything, the smallest detail, give me a call. What do you want, asshole? Lauren, is everything all right? She's just swell. Now beat it, loser! You again?
I'll see you again, asshole. Are you all right? Better than him, I guess. Who is he? An ex-client who thinks he owns me. He was getting violent, and I told him I didn't want to see him anymore. Well, you should be careful. He'll probably be back. Sorry about the mess. Mr. Shelby? Yeah. Thanks. Zone is sectioned off, sir. Please step back. Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. You got a badge or something, Mr. Jaden? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Check. You can pass. I'm looking for Lieutenant Blake. Is he around? I saw him arrive earlier. He's here somewhere. Thanks. Video memo recording. Agent 47023, Norman Jaden. Tuesday, October 4th, 2011. Time is 8.40 a.m. I'm looking for Lieutenant Carter Blake. Thanks. Lieutenant Blake, I'm Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI. I went by your office this morning. They told me to be here. Now, if you're looking for rain, dead bodies, and highways, you come to the right place. Mike, will you tell that asshole with the bulldozer to stop for five minutes? I can't hear myself think here. Right away, Lieutenant. Well, are you coming, Jaden? So, what happened? Some guy taking his dog for a piss found a body about six o'clock this morning. We don't know much more right now. Based on what we've seen, looks like the work of the origami killer. Any witnesses? None yet. Given the neighborhood, I'd be surprised if anybody saw anything. Any news on the coroner? He's on his way, Lieutenant. We've been waiting for an hour, for fuck's sake. Has the body been identified? No, not yet. We should know more later today. There are a lot of people on the crime scene. Aren't you afraid your men might destroy some clues? You don't find proof sitting behind a desk. We're not in the habit of trampling things into the ground, even if we're not in the FBI. No. No, of course not. That's... that's not what I meant. Tony! 
I don't want to see a single shit stirring journalist within a mile of here. You got it? Yes, Lieutenant. Do you have any leads? My men are going over the scene with a fine tooth comb. If the killer left anything behind, we'll find it. Listen, I'm a little busy here. Why don't we discuss all this a little later, back at the office? Oh, no problem. I understand. Do you mind if I have a look around? Be my guest. Hey, Jaden. You come and see me if you find anything, okay? We're on the same team now. Sample of no interest. Comes from one of the policemen present on the waste room. Some orchid pollen. The concentration of pollen in the air is quickly decreasing because of the rain, but it gets higher in the direction of the body. Airy comment. The pollen particles disappear in the tall grass. It's probably the end of the trail. Footprints continue just after the pollen trail. There's a good chance that they're the killers. Ari comment. Traces of blood detected on the fence behind the railroad line. The blood report indicates an advanced and long-lasting state of exhaustion. There's a good chance that they're the killers. Harry Connor. Tire tracks on the side of the boat behind the railroad line. It may be the killer's car. Harry comment, the victim is lying on his back. No visible signs of violence. His face is covered with mud, like the other victims. An orchid was placed on the victim's chest. Superficial wound on the right thigh. The blood is identical to that on the fence. A small origami figure in the right hand. Fingers were probably closed after the time of death. The victim is Jeremy Bowles, declared missing five days ago. See reference file. Think I've seen all there is to see. I'm heading 
back to the office. You stay in. No, I've seen enough. I'm leaving too. A bat. A wolf's head. A crab. A shadow. A threatening shadow. I have the results of your MRI scans. Everything seems to be normal. There is no physical damage from the accident. However, I am worried about your psychological condition. I know it's not easy, but you've got to start over, Ethan. You're not responsible for what happened. It's my fault Jason is dead. He'd still be alive if I'd been looking out for him. It was an accident. Accidents happen every day. You can't blame yourself forever for your son's death. How is Sean? He's a very solitary kid, you know, very focused within himself. He's really close to his mother. With me, he's more distant. And what about you, Ethan? What do you feel? I no longer want to live. I have no reason to continue. Not even for your son, Sean. I couldn't save Jason. Sean doesn't need a father like me. Is there something else you wanted to tell me, Ethan? I sometimes have these blackouts, times when I don't know what I'm doing. I recover consciousness sometime later, but I'm someplace else, and I have no idea how I got there. Do you think this could be related to the accident? You suffered a massive concussion and were in a coma for six months. We really don't know what effect a shock like that can have on the brain. That's the end of this session. Uh, we'll continue this conversation next week. You were lucky, Ethan. It's very rare to survive such a traumatic accident. I don't exactly feel lucky, Doctor. How did things go at school today? The teacher yelled at me for being late again. She's gonna send me home the next time it happens. I'm sorry about that, Sean. Next time, we'll really pull it together, okay? Is something the matter, Sean? No, 
I'm all right. Aren't you gonna go play with the other kids? I don't feel like it. Do you want to eat something? A boomerang? You know how to use it? No, not really. I can never make it come back. Can I give it a try? Do you want to give it a try? I won't be able to do it. Oh, come on, let's try it together. Now, the main thing is to get the right position at the beginning. And you've got to throw it straight and a little to the right. Now, throw it! Good job, Sean. See? That wasn't so hard. What about that merry-go-round? I bet I can push you so fast you won't be able to stay on it. Great! training for astronauts though <laughs> do you want to go play on the swing I'll push you okay <laughs> that was cool. Hmm. Looks like rain's coming. I think we better go. 
Okay. You know, sometimes I remember before, I mean, when Jason was still here, sometimes I wish everything could just be the way it was before. Me too, Sean. Me too. Hey, Dad, can I have a ride on the carousel? Can I? Sure. Go pick a horse and get on. I'll get a ticket. One, please. That's a dollar. Do you think it's gonna take long? No, he should be finished soon.
I'm off, Charlene. I'll look at the reports later. I'll cancel all appointments for this afternoon. Okay. Oh, Captain. Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI is here. Jaden, of course. We've been expecting you. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you mind tagging along? We can talk as we walk. Yeah, of course. I wanted to introduce myself before getting started, but uh, perhaps there's a better no, time. No, no, it's fine. We just have to get to the press conference. We have them every day now. Believe me, it's not always easy finding something to tell them. Fortunately, today we have some news. Have you met Lieutenant Blake yet? Yeah, we met this morning. He has his own methods, but he's a good cop. I'm sure you'll get him well together. Do you know how to tie a knot in a necktie? I guess. To be frank with you, I could have done without the FBI on this one, but the press are all over us. This origami killer case crept up on us, and it's fast becoming a national concern. There are hundreds of killers in this country, but what do you know? This guy is exotic. He leaves flowers and origami figures. Work that one out. Then the press get onto it, and we suddenly become the center of the universe. I'm here to arrest a serial killer. With all due respect, sir, the rest of it, it's none of my business. No, of course not. All I'm asking is that you make progress, and fast. The press want a perpetrator, and we're gonna have to serve him up on a silver platter. Hmm. Not bad. Oh, go see Charlene. She'll show you to your office. Yeah, check in on the press conference if you're interested. It'll give you an idea of the political climate around here. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the club, Jaden. Nice watch. Oh, it's the present we offer to our new lieutenants. We've bought the same model each year for the past 20 years for each promotion. It optimizes everybody's time, and it's the kind of thing that always goes down well. You can contribute to our fund if you like. We're still a few dollars short. Congratulate Larry on my behalf. I'll be sure to do that, sir. Captain Perry said you could show me to my office? Yes, of course. Follow me. This... this is my office? That's where I was told to take you. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Okay, time to work. Step one, change the office. Thank you. 
killer's car is probably a Chevrolet Malibu 83. No prints or specific clues. Hmm. Nothing much to go on. Hmm. A common species. That doesn't help much. The orchid is a common species. It can be found at any flower shop. Just one origami store in town. Eight victims in the last three years. All boys, aged between nine and 13. No signs of violence. The victims disappear from public places in broad daylight. No one notices anything. Bodies are found three to five days later, drowned in rainwater. Killer has a large comfort zone. He gained confidence rapidly and moved away from his base. Hmm, this won't make the geo profiling any easier. Always the same ritual an origami in the hand, an orchid on the chest. The victims have always been dead for less than six hours when they were found which means they remained alive for several days before being drowned. Over 3,500 people questioned. Over 100 suspects interrogated. Not a single lead to go on. Wash my face. I need to take some. I'm gonna faint if I resist. It's all right. I know I can make it. I know. I know I can make it. Is everything all right, sir? No one. No one will see.
This is Lieutenant Blake, Mr. Marsh. Could you please tell him what happened? It, it was this afternoon. I went to the park with my son, Sean. We played together for a while, and then he wanted to go on the carousel, so I put him on one of the wooden horses, and when I turned back, Sean had disappeared. Exactly what time did you arrive at the park? Try to remember exactly, Mr. Mars. Every detail can be important. It must have been about... Four forty-five, I think. I'm not really sure. What was your son wearing when he disappeared? He was wearing a coat. A black coat. And a pair of pants. Brown pants. How could Sean have disappeared without you even noticing? Weren't you right by the carousel? I went for a short walk around the park just for a few minutes. When I got back, the carousel had stopped and Sean wasn't there. You say you took your son to the park after school, but you didn't report him missing until 8.15. Why did it take you so long to contact the police? I... I don't know. I panicked. I didn't know what to do. Did Sean have any particular difficulties, Mr. Mars? Anything that might have caused him to run away? Uh, no. No, I don't think so. Everything okay at school? Any particular problems between you and your wife? Uh, my wife and I have been separated for the last six months. But Sean would not have gone off without telling his mother or me. All right. That's all the questions I have for now. You're free to go, Mr. Mars. We'll continue to look for Sean overnight. We'll contact you if we have any more questions. Do... Do you think the origami killer... Listen, your son's probably just run off and he'll turn up in a couple of hours. But what if it is the origami killer? Well, then we have about four days to find him alive. Did they find something? No, nothing yet. But they're gonna keep looking through the night. Do they... do they think it's the origami killer? It, it, it's still too early to say. But it is a possibility. What happened, Ethan? How could you lose Sean like that? You should never have taken your eyes off him. I mean, for God's sake, how hard is it to keep your eye on a child in the park? Why did you leave him, Ethan? Why? Wasn't it enough losing Jason? I'm sorry. It's not what I meant to say. Good evening. Good evening to you, sir. 
Can I help you, sir? Well, I hope so. My name's Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. Uh, I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I I'd like to ask you a few questions. My son is dead, Mr. Shelby. I have nothing more to say. I also lost someone I loved. I know what you're feeling. Then you will understand that I do not wish to talk about it. The killer has kidnapped another victim. A ten-year-old boy. Like your son, Risa. I have four days before we find his body on a deserted stretch of wasteland. No one did anything to save my son. Now, you would please to move along, sir. Oh, do you sell inhalers? I'm all out, and at least I won't go away completely empty-handed. In the back of this door, to the right. Thanks. Good evening, sir. Are you looking for something in particular? Give me what you got in the registry. Don't fucking try anything. Open the registry, you dumb fuck. Put the money on the counter. Shit, are you deaf or what? Are you gonna open that fucking register or not? No, sir. You do not have the right to steal that money from me. I have worked very hard to earn it. You cannot have it. What did you say? You're out of your fucking mind, man. You don't get it, do you? I'm gonna put a fucking bullet right between your eyes if you don't do what I say now. You shall not be robbing my register, sir. That money is mine. Turn around. I ask you now to leave before it is too late. Christ, goddamn idiot! Open the register. Don't make me fucking kill you. No, sir. Hey, you! Come here! I said come here now! Don't move! Hands up! Put your fucking hands up or I'll shoot! Look, it's not worth it. Put the gun down and just walk away. You giving me advice? I'll give you some fucking advice! My name's Scott. What about you? What's your name? Andrew. My name's Andrew. Don't panic. Let's just stay calm. Nobody here wants to hurt you. Uh, we're all just gonna be cool, and everything will be all right. Yeah. yeah. I'm cool, man. Everything's gonna be all fucking right. Do you have anyone you care for in your life? A, a girlfriend, maybe? A family? Yeah. A little girl. I got a little girl. Her name is Jessica. What would Jessica think if she saw you here? Ask yourself, what would happen to her if things go wrong? Now, I want you to put the gun back in your pocket and quietly walk out of the store. My friend and I will forget about what just happened, and you'll have earned a second chance not to fuck up your life. What do you say? And thank you, sir. I don't know what would have happened if you had not been here. Well, at least I didn't come by for nothing. Have a nice day. When my boy, Razor, disappeared, I received a letter with a locker ticket inside. Inside the locker, I found this box. I do not understand what it means, 
but I think it must be a sort of message from the man who took my son from me. Can I? Please, take the box if it can be of any use to you at all. It did not help me to save Reza, but maybe it will help you find the other little boy. Mr. Shelby! I was beginning to think that there was no good to be found in this place. I can see now that I was wrong.
There's someone here. There's someone in the apartment. The phone on the desk. I could call for help. The front door. It's the only way out. If I can reach it, I still have a chance. When the parents came home from church, all their children were gone. They searched and called for them, they cried and begged, but it was all to no avail. The children have never been seen again. I have to get out of here and find out what this ticket is about.
gonna, gonna have to make it through the crowd. I can't, can't take crowds. Just can't handle it. Line 18, box number 3.
Dad. Sean. Where are you? I'm so cold. Dad. Dad. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He doesn't act on impulse, but plans his crimes in a very meticulous fashion. He doesn't have anything personal against the victims. That's why he covers their faces with mud, to make them anonymous. Why does he kill them if he doesn't have anything against them? For him, they're more of an image, a symbol. That's probably why he gives them an origami figure and an orchid as gifts to apologize for what he's done to them. Very interesting. And where does all that get us? The best way of tracking a predator is to be familiar with his behavior. That may be true in novels, but there's a child's life at stake here. Continue, Jaden. One detail attracted my attention. The interval between the time when a victim disappears and the time when the body is found ranges from three to five days but the rainfall is always at six inches, give or take 10%. What on earth does that mean? All the victims were drowned in rainwater. The killer kills only in the fall when there is plenty of rain. It could be that he puts them in some sort of well or tank that is open to the skies and that fills up with rainwater. The more it rains, the less time the victim has to live. Then I studied the geographical distribution of the murders. Generally, a killer commits his first murder near to where he lives, so he has a safe place to flee to if any complications arise. The more confident he becomes, the further he roams from his base. By analyzing the locations where the victims disappeared, I was able to isolate a zone where the killer might live. And, and what size is this, uh, zone? For the moment, about 10 square miles. Ah, oh, great. There must be 10,000 people live in that sort of area. You gonna question them one by one? The more clues we get, the more we can reduce the zone. We can then cross-check it with our list of suspects and identify the killer. So what's next? There are two suspects whose psychological profile might fit and can be connected to the comfort zone. I'd like to question them. God damn it. We're wasting our time with this bullshit. The killer's out there somewhere, and we gotta get off our asses and find him. The killer is no ordinary murderer. He is intelligent, organized, and methodical. You won't find him by patrolling the streets. Tell me, Agent Jaden, did you get your vast experience on the job, or did you just fucking read about it in some school book? I came here to find a killer. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do. With or without your Fucking help. Fucking asshole! That's enough! You said it took six inches of rainfall before the victim died. How much time do we have left? If the weather forecasts are right, less than 72 hours.
No answer. We waste our time coming here. Maybe we should have a little look inside anyway. There's nobody home. There is now. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. Call the cops. Looks like Nathaniel Williams is a pretty religious guy. He's a God-fearing idiot, waiting for the end of the world. We questioned him a few months back because he was causing a disturbance in the park. He was ranting and raving. Said he heard voices. Had this idea in his sick little head that I was the Antichrist. I had come to Earth to persecute him. Real twisted. Good timing, Nathaniel. Just the man we're looking for. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. I'm Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. As God is my witness, I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. Relax. Nobody's accusing you of anything. We just want to talk. Nathaniel. Do you remember where you were last Tuesday at 4.30 p.m.? Here? I was here. I was praying. All day. Was there anybody with you? No. No, I was alone. Where do you work, Nathaniel? You have a job? My sole occupation is praying to the all-merciful Lord for the salvation of humanity. Why all the crucifixes? Are you afraid of something? The hour is nigh, and the wrath of God shall strike men down. I am preparing for the end of the world. What about the voices, Nathaniel? Do you still hear the voices? We know who talks to you, don't we, Nathaniel? Or we both know who talks to you. Don't speak that name. What does he say to you, Nathaniel? Blake, what are you doing? I can't talk about it. You mustn't talk about it. He orders you to go and find new prey, doesn't he? He needs more and more. No. No. You mustn't mention him. You'll bring him here. He told you to go and find that kid in the park. The voices tormented you all night long. You wanted That's them to enough. stop. Leave him Nathaniel. alone. Stop. Stop. That's enough. So you obeyed them to make them stop. You took that boy with you and you drowned him. Isn't that right? No. no. Stop. Stop. You killed them, didn't you, Nathaniel? Are you going to confess, you bastard? <laughs> You are the Antichrist. Put down the gun, I shall smash you to your father in hell. He is the son of Satan. He was sent to earth to destroy shoot, us. For Christ's sake, shoot! You're not gonna kill the Antichrist with a revolver, Nathaniel. He's much too powerful for Antichrist that. Antichrist my ass! Get that gun out of my face! Concentrate on my voice, Nathan. Listen only to my voice. Demon. You shall regret confronting the emissary of the Lord. You shall know divine power. Now gently put the gun down 
on the floor. Christ, how powerful. Defend us in our battle with the forces of evil. Protect us from the cunning and wiles of the demon. May God Almighty manifest the power of his empire. And may divine power cast Satan and all the other spirits that prowl the world in search of souls into the darkest depths of hell. I... I shot him. Yep. Looks like you did. Can't say I'll miss him. <laughs> Come on, let's go. This is both. Anybody home? Oh, Jesus. Wait a minute. Hello, little cutie. Oh, you looking for your mama? Mrs. Bowles? Mrs. Bowles, are you there? I'm gonna call an ambulance. No, I... I don't want to go to the hospital. Please. Okay. You got something around here I can dress this wound with? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Don't move. I'll be right back. Let's see, I need this, and this, and this. I've done what I can. That should stop the bleeding. Well, luckily, the wounds aren't too deep. Hey, how are you feeling? Okay. 
My baby. My baby needs me. Right. You stay there. I'll take care of the baby. Okay? Do you know what to do? With a baby, I mean. I'm a private eye. There's nothing I can't do. <laughs> Her name is Emily. Gotcha. Hi there, Emily. So, what seems to be the problem, huh? Oh! Going by the smell? I got a pretty good idea. Okay. How do you do this again? Fresh new baby. That should feel better. Right, Emily? Hmm? Hey, what's the matter? I thought we solved the problem. I guess I better warm this thing up. Just tilt this ball a little bit so you don't choke. Good job, Emily. Hmm? You're feeling good now, right? <laughs> now, I'm gonna rock you very gently so you can have a nice little snooze. Okay, all right. Thanks for looking after my baby. I didn't want to leave her. I just couldn't cope anymore. Just not having Jeremy around. He was such a good boy. 
can't understand why anyone would want to hurt him. Do you take care of this baby on your own? Doesn't Jeremy's father live with you anymore? He disappeared. The day after Jeremy. I don't know what happened to him. Maybe... Maybe he couldn't take it. Ever since I've had to look after Emily all on my own and... I couldn't do it anymore. I understand. Did your husband say anything before he disappeared? Did he leave a note or something? No. He left the house without a word and... There was just the cell phone. A cell phone? Yeah, I, I found a cell phone in his dresser. I'm sure it wasn't his. I'd never seen it before. I tried to turn it on, but it didn't work. Do you still have it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's in a drawer in the living room. You can have it if you'd like. I'm sure it's of more use to you than to me. Do you have any family or anybody to help you? Yeah. My mother. I didn't want to ask her for anything. We don't really get along. But I guess I'm out of options. Well, look after yourself. And Emma. I will. I promise. Excuse me? Hey! Oh! Huh. Sorry. Didn't see you. Uh, what can I do you for? I'd like to get... my car. Hey, you're a pretty patient guy, you are. That car's been there for two years. We took it out for a drive every month and checked the tires and batteries, just like you said. Here, it's the third floor down. The service elevator is at the far end of the garage. Thank <laughs> you. 
Your destination is four miles from here. Leave the parking lot and take the first right. If I succeed, I'll get more letters for the hangman. It's my only need. No turning back now. I can do it. I'd do anything to save my son. I've got to do it. For Sean's sake. I have no choice.
atmosphere here is one of concern, as there is still no news of 10-year-old Sean Mars who disappeared yesterday. A recent report indicates that the police are now doing this as another kidnapping by the Origami Killer. If this information is confirmed, he Hello may there, still be alive, heart. as the previous victim was killed for three to five days I'd like a room. their abduction. Obviously, for you? time is running Anything. out of the for the investigators mm. trying to find the child. Feeling the register. Madison Page 27 single How long will you be staying with us Ms. Page? I don't know yet Room 201 Last floor, stairs on the right in the courtyard Thanks The pleasure was all mine That's for sure No ambulance. You're badly hurt. Uh, you need a doctor. Please, just help me to my room. It's number 207. Got the key? You're really in bad shape. You should see a doctor. Must have one, maybe two broken ribs. It's not fatal. <laughs> but it's sore as hell. Your head is bleeding. It looks deep. I should disinfect his cuts. I'm gonna disinfect your wound. This might hurt a little. There. At least it won't get infected. Thanks. Here. Take this. It should do you what some good. It? It's a painkiller. It'll help reduce the pain. It says on the box to take one every 24 hours. I don't think it's a good idea to exceed the dose. I can't afford to wait. I wouldn't move around for a few days if I were you. I, I'm gonna take a shower. Let me help you. I'll wait here until you come out. Let me know if you need anything. Talk to me. That way I'll know if you pass out. What's your name? 
Madison. Are you staying in the hotel? No, I live in town. I suffer from chronic insomnia. I seem to only be able to sleep in motels. Don't ask me why. Whenever I get too exhausted, I, uh, I come and spend a night here. I'm... I'm just passing through. And what else do you do, Madison? Apart from fixing up strangers. I'm a photographer. I take pictures of uh, furniture for fashionable design magazines. And you? I... I'm an architect. Thanks for staying. I feel a lot better now. Okay. I better get going then. By the way, you never told me your name. Ethan. Be careful, Ethan. Was that the first time? Sorry? First time you killed somebody. It always does something to you the first time. Then you get used to it. I'm not sure I want to get used to it. That's him. Miroslav Florida? Yeah? Lieutenant Carter Blake, I'd like to ask you some questions. Oh. Oh. Shit, don't just stand there, he's gonna get away! Ah! Hey man, watch it! Ah.
This time it looks like we got our origami killer. You said I could contact you if I remembered anything. Can I come in? Sure. Let me take your coat. You want a drink? Yes, glass of water, please. Take a seat, I'll get it. I just remembered something. Maybe it's not important, but a letter arrived in the mail the morning Johnny disappeared. A letter? What kind of a letter? It was addressed to Johnny's father. I don't know what was inside it, but he read it and then he left. That's the last time I saw him. And you think there's a connection between that letter and Johnny's death, is that it? You remember anything else about the letter? Well, I don't know why, but I kept the envelope. Oh, nothing particular. Except the address. The address? It was typed with an old typewriter. Could be a lead, you never know. Well, thanks for your help, Lord. I'll let you know if it leads to anything. Wait, I... I can't just sit around and do nothing while you're out there looking for the man who killed my son. Ever since you came around, I've been thinking, and I... I want to come with you. Help you in your investigation? There's nothing you can do to help, Lauren. It's not a good idea. Believe me. If you won't let me help you, I'm keeping the envelope. It's all or nothing. Listen, an investigation like this is dangerous. And I don't have time to play the bodyguard. How many clues have you got, Mr. Shelley? This envelope may be your only link to the killer. I understand. It was a stupid idea. Sorry for wasting your time, Mr. Shelby. Wait. You're really something special, Lauren. 
I'll give you that. I'm just a mother. A mother who wants to find out who killed her son. Are we partners? <sighs> We're partners. Maybe you better stay in the car. We're partners, remember? Wherever you go, I go. What do you think he paid for all this shiny crap? We'll discuss Kramer's decor another time. Are we gonna be here long? This place gives me the creeps. I'm gonna go find Gordy Kramer. You stay here till I come back, okay? Okay, just let me know if you need me. <laughs> Mr. Kramer? Shh! This is the best part! <laughs> My name is Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I'd like to ask you a few questions. I'd like to know exactly what happened to little Joseph Brown. Beat it! You hear me? Get the hell out of here! What do you want? 
a witness saw little Joseph Brown get in the back of your limousine. That was the last time anybody ever saw him. Now, I know you've been arrested and interrogated until your father made a little phone call and the file was closed. I'd like to hear your version of the facts. The kid was lost. I just offered to drive him home. The police arrived, I explained the misunderstanding, and I was released. End of story. Nothing to get excited about, right? I don't know why, but your story just doesn't check out. You're giving me the crap now. Tell me something I can't believe. Very well. I'm the origami killer. I get my victims into my car. I drown them in rainwater. Then I dump them on a wasteland with an origami figure in one hand and an orchid on the chest. I do that because I'm bored, Mr. Shelby. And it's a creative and entertaining way of having fun. Is that good enough for you? Or do you want more? This interview is over. Get rid of this clown! It's a dangerous game you're playing, Kramer. Do you know who my father is? He only has to lift one finger and you won't wake up tomorrow morning. You're the one that should be afraid, Mr. Shelby. Not me.
glass. Broken glass. Sharp as a razor. Impossible to go back. I'm gonna have to crawl through it, slowly, so I don't tear up my arms. The match flame. It indicates where the fresh air comes from. All I have to do is follow the wind. choice. Oh my god.
Ethan. Ethan, can you hear me? You've got a hell of a fever. Are those burn marks on your chest? your clothes off to disinfect those wounds. Those are serious burns. I don't know if I can do anything for you. look really bad. I need to disinfect your wounds. Doctor, but I'll do what I can. <laughs> that should ease the pain. That's all I can do. How do you feel? Ethan? He's unconscious. Now I'll just have to wait. And hope he wakes up. How do you feel? I've been better. Was I out for long? About three hours. Why the guardian angel act? You don't even know me. You didn't really leave me any choice. I couldn't just leave you like that. You said you were here because you're an insomniac?
I, um... I prefer not to talk about it, if, if you don't mind. You, um... You got some kind of a problem? Bigger than you can possibly imagine. Mixed up with the Mafia, owe someone money, something like that. Listen, I'm truly grateful for your help, but for your own sake, I think it's better if you don't ask any questions. Maybe I could help you. No I... one can help me. You've already done a lot, Madison. Right. I'm gonna go. Take care. Do it. I swear I didn't do it. I've got nothing to do with that business. I never killed nobody. Oh, no. Then why did you run away when they came to question you? I already told you I forgot to report to my parole officer. I didn't want to go back to prison. When I saw the cops, I just bolted. I wasn't thinking straight. We checked out his statement. He has an alibi for at least three of the murders. Fuck, that bastard was a perfect fit. Shit! Ash? Okay. Sean Moss's mother is here. She'd like to speak with you. It was a few months back. The middle of the night. It was pouring down. Ethan came home completely drenched at about three. I asked him where he'd been. He, uh, he spoke about drowning, the rain. Um, he didn't make any sense. There was something. Something in his eyes. As if it wasn't really him. There may be no connection, but the next day there was that announcement about another victim of the origami killer. Find my son. I'm begging you. I'm Police Lieutenant Carter Blake. And this is Agent Norman Jaden of the FBI. According to our information, Ethan Mars is one of your patients. We'd like to ask you a few questions about him. I'm sorry, that's impossible. I beg your pardon? I'm bound by an oath of secrecy. Under no circumstances may I discuss my patience. My job is to find Sean Mars alive, and I don't give a damn about any bullshit oath. I know you don't want to protect a murderer. If you know anything, you must tell us, Doctor. I'm sorry, I can't help you. And now I must ask you to leave. You need to cooperate. For your own sake. He's right. Legally, you gotta tell us what you know. Are you threatening me? I'm just giving you some free advice, Doc. I suggest you take it. It's your duty to inform the police if you suspect one of your patients, Doctor. I am going to call the police and make a complaint about your behavior. Doctor, you are really pushing my buttons. The only thing I'm interested in is saving that kid's life. So, you're gonna be a good boy and tell me what I want to know or I am really gonna lose my temper. Doctor, a child's life is at Let stake. go of me. You may know something that you could are, help us save him. You have no right! 
Come on, Doc. There's an easy way and a hard way. It's your fucking choice. If you don't let go of this man immediately, I'll report you and you'll be off the case. What the hell's the matter with you, Norman? What, you getting cold feet? You don't want to save Sean Mars anymore? I want to save Sean Mars just as much as you do, but that doesn't give me all rights. So you're gonna stop this shit right now! Ethan Mars has had psychological problems since his first son died. Feels responsible for his death. A sort of morbid neurosis. He is haunted by visions of drowning bodies. A few weeks ago, after one of our usual sessions, I found this on the floor. It must have fallen out of his pocket. I want you to assign every available man to finding Ethan Mars. I want a man outside his place day and night. Notify all agencies to start looking for him. I want you to keep an eye on the train stations, the airports, the bus terminals. I want every cop in the city on his ass, so that if he moves, we know about it. Yes, Ethan Mars is the origami killer. Nice shot. Thank you. Please come in, Mr. Shelby. Would you care for a coffee? Oh, no thanks. Do you play? I tried once, but I think the owner of the course is still looking for me. <laughs> it's an interesting sport. It requires strength, but also a cool head and absolute precision. Would you care to hit a few balls with me? There's no danger of damaging the greens here. Okay. Take off your jacket and grab a club. The balls are in that basket. The most important thing is to grip the club correctly. When you feel ready, you swing. Well, it's only your first ball. You should try to strike it a little harder next time. I'm assuming you didn't invite me here just to play golf, Mr. Kramer. I hear you've been asking questions about my son. That's right. I want to know if Gordy is linked to the origami killer case in any way. My son had nothing to do with that sordid case. Well, then he has nothing to fear from my investigation. You have no business investigating my son. I told you, he had nothing to do with it. With all due respect, Mr. Kramer, it's up to me to decide who I want to investigate.
I'm an influential man, Mr. Shelby, and I fear very well for loyalty. Are you trying to buy me? Let's just say I'm trying to show you where your interest lies. How much do you want to leave my son alone? I think you misunderstood me. I don't play that game. Don't go near my son, Mr. Shelby. If you do, you'll regret it. Have a nice day, Mr. Kramer. Porcelain lizards? They look new. Out of place with the rest of this old beat-up stuff. Are you prepared to suffer to save your son? You have five minutes to cut off the last section of one of your fingers in front of the camera. If you succeed, you will get your reward. Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! Go! 
That's affirmative, Lieutenant. We're in position. Perfect. Nobody moves until I give this signal. Is that clear? We nail him as soon as he sets foot outside. Right, Lieutenant. Lucky that patrol spotted his car. What's he doing in there? Beats me. You're the profiler, right? I thought you were supposed to be right inside the killer's head. Well, that's just it. What I know of Ethan Mars doesn't match the killer's psychological profile. I know what the jury's gonna choose between your theories and concrete proof. What's that girl doing there? If Marsh comes out now, she's gonna be in trouble. What do we do, Lieutenant? Wanna get her out? No, stand down. Going inside. Maybe she lives there. That's just as well. We don't want anyone hanging around if Mars comes out. Ethan, what happened? The police. They're out there. I think they're here to arrest you. We've got to find another way out. Shit. What's he up to in there? Wait for a go on my word. On my go. Stay here, Jake. Out of the question. I'm coming with you. Two men at the door hold your positions. It's a go. Come on, let's go this way. Don't move! I'll shoot! Come on! 
quick. I can't. Hands in the air. Shit. Lieutenant, there's a man and a woman exiting the alley. A woman? Shit. It's that girl who went in. Everybody downstairs. They're in the alley. Follow them. The subway. Less than an hour ago, we heard from the police who have identified the man thought to be the origami killer. Ethan Mars, father of the kidnapped victim Sean Mars, is on the run and should be considered armed and dangerous. A police manhunt is now underway, and they hope that they will soon be able to announce the apprehension of this dangerous lunatic. I brought some food. I didn't know what you liked, so I brought some of everything. I, I hope that's okay. Why are you helping me, Madison? You know nothing about me. You could have been killed. I don't know. I guess it just seemed like the right thing to do at the time. You needed help. I helped you. You're all over the news reports, Ethan. Every cop in the country will be hunting you. They say you're the origami killer. Is it true? Are you the killer, Ethan? I don't know. I don't know. But I'm the only one who can save Sean. For your own safety, Madison, I think you should go. Go? Ethan, they're after me too. They've seen my face. I'm in this too deep to stop now.
I... I sometimes have these blackouts. Times where I don't know what I'm doing. As if I'm someone completely different. The only thing I remember afterwards... is the bodies. The bodies in the water. Why are you hurt, Ethan? Why were you in that apartment? I think my other self is testing me, testing my love for Sean. He wants to know if I'd love my son enough to save him. That means there's some part of me that knows where Sean is. But the only way to find him is to go through these trials. Why can't you tell that to the police? And tell them what? That I'm a schizophrenic who drowns his victims and has kidnapped his own son? They'd never let me go, and I have to stay free to save Sean. I have no choice. I'm his only chance. When Sean is out of danger, I'll turn myself in, but not until then. You can't keep going like this. You're destroying yourself, Ethan. Finding Sean is the only thing that matters. There has to be another way. You don't understand. Time is running out. Sean will be dead in a few hours. I have no choice! Please, Madison. Leave. Forget everything that's happened. There is nothing more you can do for me. If you want to help me, leave. Leave me to do this on my own. Your vodka, sir. Thanks. You look preoccupied, if you don't mind my saying so. Problems with the investigation? Blake is convinced that Mars is the killer. Not you. I thought there was some evidence to that effect. That's true. 
But it just doesn't make sense. His psychological profile doesn't fit. Neither does the geolocalization. I can't see this father drowning eight victims before kidnapping his own kid. Mars is not the origami killer. I'd stake my life on it. Then who is? I haven't the faintest fucking idea. Maybe you should review the evidence in your possession. That's just what I was thinking of doing. Oh, one last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge in you know what. It can be dangerous. Very dangerous. I'm trying to keep a handle on it, but that's difficult. It gets more and more difficult. It'll end up killing you if you're not careful. That would be most unfortunate, sir. Well, well. Looks like there's something new. The video recording from near the park on the afternoon Sean Mars disappeared. I doubt there's anything on it, but you never know. A Chevrolet model corresponding to the tire prints passed at 1602 heading for the park when in the opposite direction at 1637, that could fit the time that Sean Mars disappeared. Could it be the killer's car? The car was stolen. Let's see, a certain Jackson Neville was suspected of stealing it, but the charges were dropped. Not enough evidence. Jackson Neville, a.k.a. Mad Jack, involved in several cases of buying and selling stolen vehicles. Considered to be very dangerous. This guy might have provided the killer with a car. It's a pretty slim lead, but it's all I have right now. Oh, one last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge the evil one. It can be dangerous. Very dangerous. Shit, it's... It's coming. Tryptocaine. The tube is on the bedside table. All I need is to take some, and the pain will go away. I should resist. This is gonna kill me. I know I can resist, I just need to stay in control and, and do something until it goes away.
Manfred! Manfred! Anybody home? Hi there, Manfred. Who is it? Scott. Scott Shelby. Do you remember me? S Scott? S Scott! Oh, yes, of course. Well, good to see you. How long has it been? Oh, about ten years, I guess. Oh, at my age, time means nothing anymore. I, I repair clocks, but I try to forget about time. Well, how about you? Are you still with the police? Oh, no, I quit. I'm a private investigator now. Uh, this is Lauren. She's a, she's a friend. Hello. Oh, hello, young lady. Well, this, this calls for a celebration. I'm just the thing. Wait there. I, I'm sure I, I saw a, a bottle of scotch around here somewhere. Do an old man a favor, would you, Scott? Tell him to call back this afternoon. Sure, no problem. Hello? Yeah, this is Manfreds. He's not available right now. Could you call back later this afternoon? Thanks. Well, to old friends. <sighs> Do you like it? Yes, it's beautiful. It's a Stradelli, crafted in Venice in the 18th century. Mm. It's one of my favorite pieces. Tell me, Scott, what brings you back after all these years? I'd like you to have a look at an envelope. I thought maybe you could tell me about the typewriter that was used to type the address on it. No. Oh. Let's have a look. Now, could you pass me the uh, magnifying glass from behind the counter, oh, Sure, please? I'll get it. My eyes are beginning to fail me. Thanks. Well, let's see what this envelope has to say for itself. A Royal Five. And yes, the shape of the T's and the F's is typical of that model. Produced between 1907 and 1924. Yes. No doubt about it. It's a Royal Five. These typewriters, are they rare? No, no, they're fairly common. I'd say many folks have one gathering dust in an attic or, or in their cellar. Do you keep a record of all your clients? Oh, yes, indeed. At least the ones who pay. <laughs> Any chance I could get a peek at that? Yes, of course. I keep my account books in the office. Uh, 
If you're not in a hurry, I have a list of all the clients who ever bought a Royal Five or, or had one repaired. Yeah, that would really help us out. Hmm. Delighted to help. Give me two minutes, and I'll be right back with the list. You think the killer's been here? If he has a 1920s typewriter, he may have needed Manfred's services to get it fixed. We'll know when we get the list. Manfred. Hello? Your call is locked, sir. A police car will be there in a few minutes. I need to know who you are, sir. Sir? Hello? <gasps> oh, my God. He's dead. Oh, God. Scott? <gasps> oh, my God. What are you doing? I'm calling the police. The killer has already called the police. I think he wants us to be a scapegoat. We've got to get the hell out of here. What do you mean? We have nothing to do with his death. We were just here when it happened. Look, we're running out of time to find Sean Mars. The last thing we need is 24 hours in a police station explaining this whole thing. Well, so what do we do? Watch the front door. I'll get rid of our fingerprints from everything we touched since we came in. You better work fast. The police are going to be here any minute. That's it. We're done. You get all the prints? I got what I got. It should be enough to prevent them from finding us. Come on, let's go. So, you claim the victim was killed by you in his shop. Yes, he went to get something in his office. A few minutes later, I went in to see if he was okay. That's when I found him. You should have called the police immediately, Mr. Shelby. Would have saved us dragging your ass down here. Listen, we had nothing to do with his murder. We were only there by coincidence. I just wanted to spare myself a few hours declaring I didn't see anything to a police officer. 
P.I. or not, Mr. Shelby, don't leave town. And if you end up next door to any more dead bodies, remember to call us. Okay? Well, well, Scott Shelby. You in trouble again? Wrong time, wrong place. I know what it's like. Don't sweat. I'll take care. For old time's sake. Thanks, Carter. I owe you one. You want anything at the moment? Well, I got some ideas. Nothing concrete. Well, if it goes beyond the idea stage, you tell me about it. Yes, Scott. Sure. Where are we going? I'm taking you home. This is getting way too dangerous. No way. We are partners, remember? We had a deal. Listen, Lauren, I know you want to find the killer, but you're not helping me by putting yourself in danger. I'm not a child. I know what I have to do. I've got to find my son's killer. You're not going to stop me. Well, then you can find him without me. I refuse to be responsible for anything that goes wrong. Stop the car. What? Stop the fucking car! This girl's stubborn as a mule. She doesn't let up, with or without me. I can't just leave her like that. She'd do anything to find the guy who killed her son. once again in my arms. What do you want? Oh, fuck it. I said a thousand times that I... Hey! Take it easy, man. Huh? Keep cool. <laughs> what do you want? Dope? Money? Tell me what you need. I'm sure we can make a deal, huh? I'm gonna blow your brains out, you son of a bitch! You think you're coming to my house and steal my dope? You'll be shooting up in hell, motherfucker! Oh, man. Will you stop 
Whatever you want. You got dope? You got cash? You, you want some dope? Please. Please don't kill me, man. I got children. These are my girls, see? This one's Sarah. And a little one. That's Cindy. Please, man. I want to see them again. Please. Please don't shoot. <laughs> I'm a father too. But I'm no killer. apartment in Marble Street is a Dr. Adrian Baker. He's a struck-off surgeon. They used to sell drugs to junkies on the quad. He made some cash and bought up some cheap-ass apartments, including the one in Marble Street. Of course, he got caught. He did a few months in prison and was struck off the medical register. Interesting. Thanks for the information, Sam. I owe you one. Hey, Matt, be careful, okay? I'm on it. Talk to you later. The owner of the apartment where Ethan cut off his finger lives here. It's not much of a lead, but it's all I've got. Hi. Uh, I was told that you could get the tropin. Without a prescription. Sorry, you were misinformed. Goodbye. Hold on. I, I, I really need your help here. I can pay. Well, why didn't you say so? Please, come in. So, you're looking for betropin, my dear. Are you having trouble sleeping? How much do you need? I don't know, um, about three, four boxes. Well, no, that shouldn't be a problem. Would you like a drink? I was just about to have one. No, thanks. Well, alcohol helps take the edge off the pills, don't you think? Anyway, we should drink a toast to our first deal. I haven't seen you around here before. Who told you about me? The important thing is that we're here, right? Can you get other types of medicine? Everything has a price, my dear. What about you? Do you have a price? 
forget it. I'm not for sale. I heard you had some apartments for rent. I'm looking. Sorry, darling. Those are all booked up. Shame. I was looking for something around Marble Street. You're not drinking? I am, um, I'm, I'm not really thirsty. I'll get your prescription. Won't be a moment. Wait here. That guy gives me the creeps. I better take a look around to see if I can find anything before he gets back. It's like he retired a bunch of medical supplies on his way out. There's enough sleeping pills here to knock out an army. Surgical gowns? I thought he stopped performing operations. Must be some kind of a weird nostalgia for the past. claimed he had come to the census. Another one of those goddamn government spies. So, you're interested in my Marble Street apartment. I rent it to my friend Paco, if you must know. I have no idea what he does there. Maybe that's where he fornicates with his dancers from the Blue Lagoon. <laughs> To be honest, I don't give a damn, because as long as he pays his rent, he can do whatever he likes. But enough with the chit-chat. I miss surgery, you see, so I take every opportunity to practice. I don't have any instruments here, so I use whatever comes to hand. I hope you won't hold that against me. Hold on. Is my stinger. <laughs> Have you ever noticed? As soon as you start to do a little housework, someone always comes calling. I'll get rid of our visitor and be right back. Don't move, I won't be long. Hello, sir. 
I come to bring you the word of the Lord in the form of these magnificent Bibles, which I will gladly leave with you in return for a contribution of only five dollars. No thanks, I love Come now, sir. I cannot believe the word of the Lord is of no interest to you. We, his humble flock, should walk in his steps, for St. John has said. What you doing in there? Nam and Jaden, FBI. Can we talk for a minute? Yeah. I'm looking for the owner of a blue Chevrolet Malibu 83. I don't give a damn how the car got here, whether you stole it or not. I just want to know who bought it from. Sorry, man. Don't ring a bell. I got a real bad memory. Perhaps I can help you to remember. If we find out that you sold the car to the man we're looking for, you're looking at some pretty solid time inside, Jackie boy. <laughs> you trying to scare me with your big talk? I never saw your damn car. Now take a walk. their blood here. Size 10. Most likely a visitor.
On your head, pig. I ain't got time to be playing around with you. Let's just get you out of sight and finish you off. Tell me about the man with the blue car. Go fuck yourself in the ass. Uh, broke my fucking nose, pig. Next, I'm gonna blow a hole in your face. Spill all of it. You won't scare me, Mr. CSI. You ain't got it in you. Do you like fireworks, Jack? Because I bet them gas tanks are gonna blow up real nice. Shit, man, don't mess with the gasoline. Well, just say it was an accident. Or rather, I'll say it was an accident because you won't really be able to talk, will you, Jack? You a crazy motherfucker. You out of your mind, man. Well, I don't know nothing about the guy. He wanted me to get rid of his dirty car, get him a new one with false plates. He paid cash, and I ain't the questioning kind. Said I was... Supposed to drop the word to a guy named Paco down at the Blue Lagoon when the car was done. Now that's all I know. We'll continue this discussion down at the station. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything... Oh, shit, not now. Anything you say can and will be... Hey, <laughs> you look like you got a problem, man. So, you think the origami killer killed Manfred? That makes sense. Didn't want him spilling his guts to us. And you suspect Gordy Kramer, right? Oh, him or one of his men. Gordy has the time and the means, not to mention the fucked up attitude to go along with it. He's only a suspect, but he's a pretty guilty looking one. Are these your files on the case? Yeah, I've been working on them for a couple of years. Uh, I built up a mountain of paperwork. Magazines about origami? You think the killer could have subscribed to one of those? If he was even remotely interested in origami in the last 30 years, his name may be in there somewhere. The trouble is, there's over 500 names. I guess a squat. I'm starving. Do you have anything to eat? Well, I'm no chef, but I should be able to make some scrambled eggs if you like. Great. I'm soaking wet. I need to warm up a little. Is it okay if I take a shower? I'll be my guest. Go to my bedroom. It's the next door. Oh, I'll cook up the eggs while you're under the shower.
Egg should be ready by now. I took the liberty of borrowing your bathrobe. Looks better on you. Hey, that almost looks good enough to eat. What's that? The notebook I took from Manfred's place. According to this, about 30 clients bought spare parts for Royal Machines in the last 10 years. The killer may be one of them. Oh, you know, checking out the alibi of 30 clients one by one, that's a lot of legwork. Except that if we cross-check them with the list. The list of subscribers to Origami Magazines. You still got that, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. But Lauren, wait. If the killer really used a royal typewriter, and if he subscribed to an origami magazine, his name should be on both lists. Well, Lauren, uh, I mean, that's just an assumption, but yeah, I suppose. His name is here somewhere. Help me, we're gonna find him. The only guy whose name was on both lists died when he was 10. What are you gonna do now? Pick up his coffin, make sure he's dead? I know it doesn't make any sense. Unless the killer was only using his name. But why use the name of a kid who died 30 years ago? Well, that's what we came to find out. The name is John Shepard. It should be on a grave around here somewhere. You never give up, do you? Excuse me. I'm looking for the grave of a boy named John Shepard. Straight ahead, a little further out. Thanks. Hey, Lauren. I found it. Origami figures. That's one hell of a coincidence. These flowers are fresh. Looks like someone's still tending the grave. Oh, youngin. That one I knew well. You knew John Shepard? I've worked this graveyard nearly all my life. I remember what happened. It was in 77. October. again. What are we gonna do? It's pouring rain. We're gonna get soaked if we spend a day outside. 
Well, at least you won't get beat. Little rain never hurt nobody. Come on, let's go play. Bet you can't catch me! Wait for me! Get a move on!
and try to find me, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, ten, fourteen, eighteen, twenty. Guys, that's John's voice. My foot. My foot is stuck. Grab on. I'll put it over there. never did find any help. And his brother drowned in a pipe full of rainwater. The boy that lived, what happened to him? Well, all I know is he got separated from his parents. I, I think he got adopted. Well, looks like a storm's coming. I guess I better be getting home. What a horrible story. John Shepard drowned in the rain while holding his brother's hand. Do you think he... He could be the origami killer? Come on. Let's get back in the car. What's the matter? That man over there. Yeah? It's Charles Kramer. Gordy's father? What's he doing here? He's putting flowers on John Shepard's grave. Doc's apartment on Marble Street. Better be careful. He might be the killer. I'm looking for Paco Mendez. Do you know where he is? He's at his table over there. Does he know you? Not yet, but I have to talk to him. That's not possible. Mr. Mendez is asked not to be disturbed.
Taco seems to like this more sexy. Sexy name. Talk to the gun, and I get out of there before I get into big trouble. Everything's gonna be all right. Everything is going to be all right. So, welcome to my little kingdom. <laughs>
You go, girl. If you call out, I'll kill you. Got it? Shit. What you want? You rent an apartment on Marble Street. I want to know why. An apartment? I don't know what you're talking about. You haven't got the balls, lady, but you're going to know balls when I cash up with you. Boss? Yes? Where's Paco? I'm sorry, I'm, he can't come to the door right now. He's all, um, tied up at the moment. Oh, I see. <laughs> ah! <gasps> If you value those prized balls of yours, Paco, then it's time for you to talk. Oh, oh, what you doing? Stop it! Stop it! I'm only getting started. How about some more? Ah, I never saw foot in that apartment. I gave the keys to some guy. He said he needed a place. He had money. What was that guy's name? I, I don't know his name, I swear! Ah, ah! Ah! Shepard! His name is John Shepard, that's all I know, I swear it! Ugh. There, that wasn't so hard, was it? I really appreciated this romantic moment, but I got a dash. See you next time, lover boy.
Madison Page? What was a journalist doing here? The killer was looking for something. Paco Mendez was no saint. His rap sheet reads like the telephone book. Orchid pheromones. The fucking origami killer. A bullet. Right between the eyes. Instant death. Madison Page? She may be a witness. His coat pocket. I tore it off during the fight. Two receipts from the same gas station. Interesting. Ethan, are you all right? I couldn't do it. I was supposed to kill him to save Sean. And I couldn't do it. You're not the origami killer, Ethan. You're not responsible for those murders. I can prove it. That changes nothing. Saving Sean is all that matters now.
should have guessed. All this time and I had no idea. Ethan, what's the matter? I thought I meant something to you. Listen, I... You're a pretty good nurse for a fucking journalist! <gasps> Ethan, I, I I wanted to tell you, but... What kind of article were you gonna write? My life with a serial killer? No, no, no. How I caught the origami killer. Maybe you'll get a book deal. I hope it was fucking worth it! Ethan, it's not what you think. I... You lied to me, Madison! All this time you fucking lied to me! I thought you wanted to help me, but you're only thinking of writing a fucking book?! journalist and I knew that you were the father of the boy who had disappeared and and I wanted to cover the story but then I saw what you were going through to save your son and and I understood how much you love him I wanted to tell you the truth but I couldn't I was afraid that you that you may not believe me. I was afraid that you'd ask me to go. All I want is for you to find your son alive. And when it's all over, I want to be with you. I'm sorry, Ethan. I'm so sorry. You're leaving, aren't you? It's the last origami figure. The last letters, then I'll know where Sean is. Take care, Ethan. I can't lose you now. find something to eat. Wait for me, I'll, I'll be back in 10 minutes. like a raid. What's going on? Isn't this great? Like being in a TV show. Who'd have thought it? The origami killer renting a room here registered under a false name, but I recognized his face. Come on, what was the damn number? Come on, come on. Pick up the phone. Hello? The cops, they're in the motel. You've got to get out of here.
on your knees, hands behind your head. Easy, pal. Nowhere to go. You're surrounded. Everything. Holy! Lord? I'm sorry, Scott. You should have listened to me, Mr. Shelby. I told you to drop the investigation. Your son is a serial killer. How many people does he have to kill before you turn him in? Gordy has his faults, but he's still my son. You have no children, Mr. Shelby. You can't possibly understand. You leave me no choice. Your investigation is over. For good. Switch on that ignition. I was going to take up swimming again. This isn't exactly what I had in mind. 
You got a car back at your place? Mine's obviously pretty fucked up. Yeah, sure. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna go settle a few scores. Come on, I'll take you home. Lock your doors and windows and don't let anybody in but me. Okay? Be careful, Scott. I don't want to lose you. son killed all those kids, didn't he? He's the origami killer. No, no, he's innocent. He's not a killer. Not a killer. <laughs> oh. 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 You're a fucking liar. Now tell me the truth. No, no, please. Don't hurt me. Last chance. I don't know. I swear. I don't know anything. Stop! Stop! I beg you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything. Gordy... Gordy always wanted his fun, you know? He wanted to... to be like the origami killer. He kidnapped that kid and... he held him under the water for a little too long. It was an accident. An unfortunate accident. He just wanted to play. He told me everything. He was crying. He was so sorry for what had happened. Whatever he did. Gordy... Gordy is my son. No one will miss him. What? That boy, Gordy killed. No one will miss him. The street trash, like so many others. Oh, you disgusting pile of shit. And what about John Shepard? Why did you put flowers on his I, grave? I own the construction site where he died. I never forgot. I've been putting flowers on his grave for 30 years. John had a twin brother. What happened to him? I don't know. He was adopted, I think. 
His mother. His mother should know. Her name is Anne. Anne Shepard. My heart! My heart! Quickly! I need my pills! In that drawer! There! Hello, I'm looking for Anne Shepard's room. Please sign the visitor's book. Are you a member of the family? Yeah, you could say that. Oh, she'll be pleased to have a visitor. No one ever comes to see her. With the Alzheimer's, she has trouble remembering things, but it'll still please her, you know. It's room 19 at the end of the corridor. Thank you. Hello, Mrs. Shepard. Is it time for my pills already? No, Mrs. Shepard, I... They're never on time with my pills. I don't know what they do here. In the other hospital, they were always on time. But here... My name is Madison Page. I'm a journalist. I'd like to ask you some questions about your son. I don't like this hospital. The food isn't very good, you know. Do you remember John? My Johnny. He is a good little boy, you know. You had a son named John and John had a twin brother. Do you have my pills? It's time for my pills. Try to remember, Mrs. Shepard. John's twin brother was placed with a foster family after the accident. What was the name of the foster family? I asked them for a television, you know. They said I didn't have enough money. It's a pity. I'm fond of television. Your other son, Mrs. Shepard, John's twin brother. What was his name? What other son? Well, I have no other son. I never had any children. I think your son is in trouble, Mrs. Shepard. He's done some terrible things. I need to find him. Do you understand? Terrible things you're telling me. He never came to see me, can you believe it? In 10 years, never. No one forgets their mother, do they? I know what happened at Carnaby Square. Do you remember? Carnaby Square. I think I used to live there a long time ago. We didn't have much money at the time, you know. 
We had to make do with very little. Mrs. Shepard, your son may be linked to a series of murders. Perhaps you have some information that could help the investigation. Are you a new nurse? Where are my pills? Oh, you know how to do these little dogs, too. My children loved origami. I taught them how to do it. John loved the little dogs. He always wanted to call them Max. Max, Max, Max. All dogs with the same name. I was wasting my time telling him they couldn't all have the same name. But he always wanted his paper dogs Max. It's funny, isn't it? You don't seem to get many flowers, Mrs. Shepard. No, but I love them. My son knows that I love flowers. I know he'll bring me some. Are these your children, Mrs. Shepard? John and his brother? Is that them? They're good little boys. Their father never looked after them, always drinking. They didn't have an easy life, you know. What a lovely orchid. My sons loved orchids. We used to grow them in the back. When John died, I laid orchids on his grave. I cried when they told me. I'd already lost one of my children, and now they were taking away another one, you understand? The foster family, Mrs. Shepard, what was the name of the foster family that adopted John's brother? They were really very nice people. I met them, you know. In the beginning, I used to go and see my little boy. And then I got sick and I couldn't go any longer. Perhaps he thought I'd forgotten him. He must have thought I didn't love him anymore. His name, Mrs. Shepard. What was his name? But I loved him. If you only knew how much I missed him. Please, Anne. His name. What was his name? Come closer.
the last trial, the last question. Are you prepared to give your life to save your sons? There is a deadly poison in this file. It will kill you in exactly 60 minutes. If you drink it, you will get the last letters of the address. You will have enough time to save your son and say goodbye to him, but then you will die. You can drink the file or decide to leave. The choice is yours. I did what I had to, Sean. Your dad's coming to save you. Fucking, fucking address! Come on! There's gotta be a way to do this! Several different addresses fit these letters. God, they're scattered all over the city. I don't have time to check them all. They only have time for one address. If Sean's not there, I'm done. It's a crapshoot. We've only got a few more hours left to save Sean Mars. There has to be a goddamn clue somewhere. It's probably staring me in the face. This kid's gonna die, and I'm going around in circles! Packed up and ready to go? What are you talking about? The investigation's over. We know who did it. We no longer need your services anymore, Norman. So you can ride your files all the way back to Washington. I'd be lying if I said I was gonna miss you. The investigation isn't over. You have absolutely nothing on Mars. Mars is guilty. Case closed. 
Anyway, it's no concern of yours. Now you're off the case. So pack up and fuck off. Blake, you are an unbalanced, psychopathic asshole. I'll take that as a compliment. Honestly, I don't give a shit what you think. I found the origami killer. Everyone's happy. End of story. Have a nice trip back, Norman. The killer's name is here. Somewhere in this data, I just have to find it. Find it before it's too late. Oh, one last thing, sir. You should be careful not to overindulge in you know what. It can be dangerous. Very dangerous. It'll end up killing you if you're not careful. That would be most unfortunate, sir. Harry was in record mode when I was fighting with the killer. Perhaps there's something on it. Gold watch. I'm sure I've seen this before somewhere. The watch they give for promotions to lieutenant. The killer is a cop. The killer lives in this zone. 342 people live around there. Not good enough. Gotta find a means of identifying the killer more precisely. There's only one cop in that geo-profiling zone. Gotcha. He owns a warehouse on the docks. If I'm wrong, Sean Mars is dead. Are you sure it's the right car? At the docks. Call in the SWAT team. Oh, and I'll need a chopper. Today? Of course I'll need it today, you fucking imbecile. I'm gonna stay with you, Scott. I don't wanna go. Look, it'll only take a couple of days. Long enough to get this resolved. I can't just wait while you confront my son's killer. It's the only way, Lord. Trust me. Now go stay with your mother for a few days. I'll come and get you when this is all over. Tell me who the origami killer is. I want to know who killed my son. Listen, when I'm done, I'll tell you everything I know. I promise.
lost your touch, girl. The origami killer's apartment. There must be something that'll tell me where Sean Mars is. uniform. Always trust a cop. That's why children went with him. He was dressed as a cop. Sean Mars. Oh, the lunatic's been watching him drown. But it's some kind of a well filling up with <sighs> shit. It needs a password. name John gave to his paper dogs when he was a child. What the hell is that? An address. It's gotta be where Sean Mars is. Hurry, there's no time to lose. So you found my little secret? It's over, Scott. All those children killed just to find a father capable of saving his son? Shut up! You don't understand. There's one child left. There might still be time to save him. Let him go. Do what your father couldn't do.
way too high. I'll kill myself if I jump. I've got to find something else. I know where Sean Mars is. I've got to call that FBI guy, Jaden. He's the only one I can trust. He'll be able to save him. Mom and Jaden. My name is Madison Page. You don't know me. I'm a journalist. We don't have much time, so listen carefully. Ethan Mars is innocent. The killer's name is Scott Shelby. Sean Mars is at 852 Theodore Roosevelt Road. You got all that? Wait, I know of it already. I'm on my way to the warehouse. I gotta go. Capable of saving his son. Just to find a father? Do you have any idea how it feels to be a worthless nothing in your father's eyes? Believe me, I've suffered. Just as much as my victims. I finished your damn trial. 
Now give me back my son! He's there. All you have to do is open that grip. Sniper's in position? Yes, Lieutenant. They're ready on your command. Perfect. He won't get away this time. We'll gun him down as soon as he shows his face. Hey! You there! What are you doing? Lieutenant, my name is Madison Page. I'm a journalist. I have proof that Ethan Mars is innocent. He's not the origami Ash, killer. What is a journalist doing here? I thought I told everybody to keep their mouths shut. Get her out of here. I don't want her getting in the way. Okay, Lieutenant. All right, come on. You're about to make a terrible mistake, Lieutenant. Ethan Mars is innocent. I can prove it. Oh, <laughs> 
You were gone. Dad, I knew you'd come and oh. save me. Sean, oh. listen. You are the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. I want you to know that whatever happens, I love you more than anything in the world. I, I'm not dead. I took the poison an hour ago, and, and I'm not dead. Ash, get her out of my face. Mars didn't do it, for Christ's sakes. He's innocent. Sorry I didn't trust you. I was only thinking about Sean, and I thought... That's okay. The only thing that matters is that you saved your son. This morning, when the police announced that they had found...
man thought to be the origami killer. Scott Shelby, 48, is a former police lieutenant who claimed to be a private eye hired by the families of the killer's victims. Shelby was killed during a massive police operation, but further details have not yet been released to the public. Let's just say a friend of a friend let me jump in line. If we like it, it's ours. Hey, Dad! I think I found my room! Well, what do you think? It's perfect, Ethan. We'll be able to forget what happened. We'll lead a normal life. And one day, it'll all just seem like a bad dream. We've earned the right to be happy now, Ethan. All three of us. Magazine this week and has been hailed by the whole nation as a new hero for our times. Astonishingly, he almost single handedly ended the sinister series of killings by the man known as the Origami Killer and saved the life of young Sean Mars. His determination, courage, and intelligence have won our admiration. Norman Jaden. <laughs> You killed my son, Scott. Were you thinking about that when you held me in your arms? I don't know why you did all this. Nothing can justify it anyway. I feel nothing but contempt for you. Nothing. 
nothing but contempt. 